It can feel good to grab a bargain, but the price of our clothing is more than monetary. There are devastating human and planetary costs at every stage of the clothing system, from water pollution to modern slavery. Standing on Glasgow's Buchanan Street, we can see that clothing is big business, and in Scotland, we consume 38% more of everything, including new clothes, than the rest of Europe. With the average lifetime for a clothing item in the UK estimated at just 2.2 years and around £140 million worth of clothing ending up in landfill each year, buying less, choosing well and keeping clothing in use for as long as possible is one of the things that we can do to reduce their impact. According to a recent report by Zero Waste Scotland, clothing is the most problematic product disposed of in the household bin and accounts for up to 32% of carbon emissions produced in Scotland. We ask consumers what leads to clothing disposal and share their experiences along with tips from experts on how to avoid clothing damage that leads to disposal. From moths to clothing wearing out, we share these challenges and how to overcome them when buying, using and disposing of clothing. My biggest enemy is moths, that is my biggest clothing problem. I do have moth holes in this one for example. This one's got quite a few holes and will probably have to go. Every so often I use a smoke bomb but they keep coming back and I'm not quite sure of what to do. Clothes moths are a problem because they're protein eaters. In the wild they deal with carcasses, they eat dead animals and dead birds, they eat fur, feathers, skin and hair, human hair, animal hair, it's all the same to them. They like dark and undisturbed areas, the back of closets, inside pockets and collars, and they can create an awful lot of damage in a small space of time if you leave them undisturbed. In the museum world, we use a system called integrated pest management, which is a system of inspections and freezing. You can use your domestic freezer if you have a moth outbreak. You take your garments, you put them in a sealed plastic bag, such as a Ziploc bag or a plastic bag with tape on, and put it in your freezer for two weeks at minus 18 degrees. That should kill all the moths. And then when you take them out of the freezer, vacuum them to remove all the debris. Always check for moth holes before buying secondhand. Check pockets and collars. Put secondhand jumpers in sealed bags and then into the freezer for two weeks. Then vacuum before wearing. Do a spring clean, moths are most active spring to summer. Shake clothing out and make sure it's laundered and free of bacteria such as food before storing. I'm a student on a budget and some of my clothes can wear out quite fast such as jumpers that bubble quite quickly. I use the debubble tool but they just come back. If they get a hole I can usually repair them but I tend to have other clothes that I wear until they're falling apart. Like bras and pants, they just don't seem to last. A pilling comb or lint remover can help remove pills and fuzz and the internet is a great source for how to fix and repair. In general, loose open fabrics tend to wear faster than densely knitted or woven fabrics. And while synthetics add strength, they can increase staining, odour and pilling when blended with a natural yarn. Buy the best quality you can afford for the intended purpose. Products that last are made from the right choice of fibres, yarns and fabric structures. So read product claims, reviews and recommendations and consider quality second-hand items. Once bought, use and care for your product appropriately. Always follow the care label. I'd recommend using a wash bag, washing inside out, closing zippers and velcro fasteners, using appropriate detergents and wash darks and lights separately. Line dry more and tumble dry less. See, my partner wears a lot of t-shirts to the gym and they really tend to wear out really quickly and they get sweat stains on them. He just puts them in the bin and I go and get them out. Then I tend to wash them and put them in a plastic bag ready for the recycling bin. But I really don't know if I'm doing the right thing. Everyday household products like bacon soda, lemon juice and vinegar can be effective on stains but always check the care label and don't use on delicate fabrics like wool and silk. Check clothing care labels and try to select natural fibres where possible. Wash clothing less but make sure to air clothing in between uses. Access cost-effective stain removal solutions by watching videos online and using household products. 
Use an old pillowcase as a wash bag to put your delicates such as underwear in when washing. I try to put things I then think people will wear into the charity shop, but I just never know if they are sold or what really happens to them. So in the clothing banks you can put all clothing and shoes and all household textiles, so the likes of bed linen, pillowcases, duvet covers, the only thing that can't go in here is duvets and pillows. Well it needs to be in a plastic bag to keep the quality and to keep it contamination free so it needs to be clean and dry for us to then process in our factory so that we can sort it for the best quality of reuse. So when it's brought into our facility here in Denny we sort and grade it into over 200 different grades of material which we call an end product so it can be then sorted by quality and fibre type and then we'll bail it into men's jumpers, women's blouses, men's jeans and so on. Anything that's not good for reuse we will then sort for recycling. Household textiles that can be reused that we collect from our clothing banks, we send on for downcycling, which ultimately ends up in material like this, which is noise insulation for the motor industry and also Maris topping that protects the consumer from the springs in the Maris. We are now looking at new technology, fibre to fibre, where we can pull the clothing and household textiles back into this candy floss type material that we call it. It is then put through a series of machines that is then spun back into this and then ultimately it can be spun back into yarn which can then be made back into new consumer textiles. So we sell to wholesale retailers, countries like East and West Africa, so Kenya and Ghana and Eastern Europe, Hungary, Poland, etc. We don't send anything unsorted, we don't collect it and then ship it abroad. We sort and grade it into what our customers ask for. So they'll send us a packing list and they'll ask for 50 bales of men's jeans, 50 bales of women's blouses and so forth. Where it'll either be cut for wiping cloths for the oil and gas industry or we'll send it on for further manufacturing into carpet underlay, noise insulation for cars, or mattress toppings for consumer mattresses. Always put clean clothes in a clean plastic bag before putting in the clothing bank. Put all clothing items in the clothing bank, even your clean used underwear. When donating to charity for resale, think, would you wear it? In our short journey through clothing use and disposal, we hope we've given you a flavour for some of the actions you can take to avoid and address everyday clothing problems. Taking you back to this shopping street, we ask you to consider if you love it before you buy it. Considering this avoids the human and environmental costs of resource extraction, production and distribution for every item we buy to make the things you already have last. In the UK, continuing to actively wear a garment for just nine months longer could diminish its environmental impacts by 20 to 30%. But this needs you to think about what you buy and how you care for it. And not to bin it. As we have shown, you can put most items in the clothing recycling bank. Just make sure you launder and bag it, and if given to the charity shop, mark it as a rag bag if the items are no longer fit for resale. This is a challenge for all of us, and these are problems and solutions for sharing. 